Canadian. Because <laughs> he right. is Canadian. I know. Welcome to We Are Libertarians for this week. I am your host, Chris Spangle. As always, Mr. Creighton Harrington is joining us. <laughs> and that is Greg Lenz to my right. Greg, Hello. how are you doing? I'm doing well, Chris. How are you? Behind him is Mittens. Yep. Mittens, how are you? Okay. <laughs> On uh, Google Hangout is our buddy Joe Ruiz from South Bend, Indiana. Joe, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. Yeah. And yeah. Also joining us this week is Mr. Daniel Peppers. Peppers, how are you doing? I'm doing all right, I, considering I've been uh, introduced after the cat. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a podcast. She was an original member, apparently. Um, now she keeps you, watch. She keeps watch. Here in the uh, Indiana Young Americans for Liberty circle, there are the Peppers brothers. I, I was like, as I was introducing you, I was like, all right, I can't go with Mr. Peppers. This is Daniel, not Chris. Daniel, not Chris. Because the Peppers brothers are two finely bearded young men. And uh, they, <laughs> why'd you look at me weird like that when I said that, Greg? <laughs> um, uh, finally might not be the right word. Maybe awesomely. Awesomely. <laughs> finally, yes. Okay. Awesomely bearded. Uh, you have more hair on your upper lip than Joe and Greg have on their head combined. Yep. <laughs> Have no air on their head. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us a little bit about yourself, Peppers. What what do you what do you do? What is your libertarian philosophy? Or where where do you live? All that good stuff. Give well, us a rundown here. Um, I live downtown with my brother, so it's a very beard heavy household. <laughs> um, I uh, I work as a truck driver. I do a dedicated route. I rather not say the company name over over the podcast but sure can you tell us the route just in case the fbi is listening <laughs> oh we're, we're actually told not to not to tell people too much about our routes um, okay all right you guys are curious i mean i can fill you in all the details <laughs> later so you work for like the department of agriculture <laughs> right so if anyone level is, six level if six if anyone is, <laughs> he's, he's the one carrying the ebe and the x files uh -huh. if yeah. anyone is interested in stalking peppers send him a message he'll give you his route yeah. <laughs> so, or, or, or you could may I have it. Or you could subscribe to uh, Find My Friends on, uh, on your <laughs> iPhone. Uh, yeah, that's really like – it's like the Homeland Security designed that app so <laughs> you can watch your friends' movements at all times. And who wouldn't want an app does to watch – Does it work? Who wouldn't want an app to watch their friends' but movements? Does it work? Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Homeland Security didn't design it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big dust up with the CIA because their Apple specific chat system can't be in, uh, decrypted by the CIA's technology. Oh, what a shame. They're all upset wow. about it. Take that, Galt. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is the one thing that Apple has going for it is that their their co their programming is it, all internal. It, and yeah, it's it's all really good on any like you. I don't think there's any viruses for Macs or anything. No, there there are a few, but the thing is the way the uh, the operating system set up, you pretty much have to give the virus permission to install itself before it can screw up your computer. <laughs> so tell now, how did you become a libertarian? What was what was it that brought you to the libertarian movement? No, it was kind of interesting. I started off as a uh, ditto head because. Uh, uh, dudle up, my, dudle up, dudle up, dudle yeah, up, dudle up, dudle up. I don't mm -hmm. even know what the, what's going on. Rush Limbaugh. Rush. Yes. Uh, the three, the three of us uh, have listened to Rush Limbaugh for a long time. The apparently. all knowing Maharishi. <laughs> I actually painted El this Rushbo. microphone. I painted this microphone gold just before we started up. So <laughs> no, peppers. He, no, he didn't. No, he Tell didn't. Tell us a little bit about uh, what. <laughs> <chance for>. <laughs> 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 Tell us how you transformed from a ditto head into a libertarian. Well, I mean, it, it was all about getting out on my own. I'd always, I always felt that busybodies were. Uh, we're always a bad thing on society, you know. Sure. You should always stick to what what your business is. And then I joined the army where I had no personal business anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. Everything was a matter of public you, record. You became point. a maggot. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It, what? It's it's the, <laughs> maggot. Uh, oh, that, that's, <laughs> it's, what's that? What's the movie? Clockwork Orange. Okay. <laughs> Today is Jesus's birthday. No, that was. What are you talking about? Uh, full Metal Jacket, right? Full Metal Jacket. Same difference. You got 
that isn't even the only thing similar in those two movies is the director. Right. Well, <laughs> the and the only way it makes sense is LSD. <laughs> no, full what? There so was no LSD in full metal. metal so you're wearing anyway, your movie. veterans for Ron Paul it's a t-shirt great movie. Yes. Arlie Army. <laughs> so you Show respect. are in the military and what happened? Was in the military. Right. Yeah. Oh, notice the shirt. Anyway, um while I was in the military, you know, I um uh, I mean, it was the first time I was trying to come up with my own ideology, independent of a lot of my childhood friends and family. Sure. And um, it, it was very easy to get caught up in that war culture, so I, I became more and more neoconservative mm-hmm. until I watched the wrong documentary and became a truther for a little while. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. I thought you said he was who, okay. Yeah, who did you invite on this podcast? Uh, it, it's, it's an embarrassing part of my past, I guess. Well, yeah. everything, everybody does things in college they're not proud of. I was uh, I held some pro-war protest in 2003. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, growing, learning, and ultimately, right. I, I, I read a certain popular mechanics article, and right. now I'm now I'm all better. And um, what you mean you read science? Is that what you said? <laughs> I read science. <laughs> this science thing—it's really got some. I'll good tell you points. what, man, Alex Jones. <laughs> you know, this scientific method. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I gotta say, Alex Jones is very charismatic, though. He, I mean, if. Right. If you just take him at, it's very easy to take him at his word, and he can convince convince you of anything. There were jesters in the king's courts that were pretty charismatic too, probably. What did you say, Joe? I said there were jesters in the king's courts that were pretty charismatic. I assume. Oh, exactly. But yeah. you do realize for that past ten seconds of talk we just had, we're going to get blown. Oh up. yeah, that might I be know. Out. Out. No, it's not getting edited out. And we are going to get blown <laughs> up. I can't listen to Alex Jones because I can't take it when it sounds like you're listening to, uh, what was the comedian from the 80s? Oh, oh, oh! oh Sam, uh, Sam, Kinison. Sam Kinison. Sam Kinison. Sounds like, it sounds like Sam Kinison just walked off stage after eight hours, <laughs> smoked 14 packs of cigarettes, and then did a radio show. <laughs> like, come on, it's like Randy the Macho Man Savage without the personality. Dude, he's such. Nah, or the let's, not get in, let's not get into Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah. That's a tangent we don't need. That's, yeah. that's a road less traveled. It needs to stay less traveled. Now, the Macho Man, on the other hand. Macho Man, we'll get to later. Hey, Tower of Power, hey, too sweet to be hey, sour. A mile. You know, I'm going to give him an inch. He's going to give me a mile. Whatever I say. What so I do. it's, don't blame me, is what I'm saying. That's what I do. Right. Right. <laughs> Anyway. Peppers comes on the podcast and ruins it the first time he's on. <laughs> I broke the podcast. <laughs> Damn it. Dude, do you even cast, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Rebranding, yes. Uh, all right, so you go through, you read science. Science convinces you that science is good. Yeah. And be our motto. So science. What, why, don't you dis- why don't you agree with this? Science. So science tells you that things are real. Yes. And that they are the way that they are. <laughs> And that steel will collapse when it's been. When what did I go too far? It, you know? <laughs> was I too sane? Damn it! <laughs> and then what happened? Oh, I, I got discharged from the army due to a uh, due to a workout related injury. It really isn't all that exciting. Yeah, you pulled a hammy. No, it was it was um, it was actually a bulge disc in my back oh. due to uh, due to excessive lifting of weight and whatnot. Uh, you lifted, bro. That's so crazy. I can I can actually relate to that. I mean, it was like uh, rucksacks and whatnot. You, Joe, know, you gotta carry a sixty pound, eighty pound ruck and go uh, march it for you know ten, fifteen kilometers. That so is a ruck of, of a technical term for something really heavy. It's a oh, a rucksack is a specially designed backpack. Right, uh, full of rocks. Joe, did you bulge something? A rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and Rand Paul wasn't even involved. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, I was lifting weights in high school. I had actually signed up to be in the Army Reserves, and I was about a month away from basic uh, when I was you know, doing squats in the weight room during a weightlifting class in, in uh, 12th grade, and I heard something pop. And I said, well, that didn't sound good, but I, it, it, it didn't hurt. But two weeks later, something started throbbing in my back, and about six months later, I was receiving oh, wow. surgery. What? So what yeah. happened to your injury? I, I thought this was a family-friendly <laughs> right. podcast. People are listening uh, in their cars, Joe. Jeez. Uh, you know, you know. What was on the, what was on the bar? <laughs> oh, gosh, I don't remember. 
<laughs> if you're a real man, you'd remember and you'd proudly announce that it was at least 113 pounds. <laughs> it was just the bar. <laughs> just kidding. That I saw put up 285. 520. Yeah. But apparently, bad backs ruin military careers, is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I knew a guy with four slip discs. Uh, still passed a PT test. All right, so apparently this has become a boomer podcast talking about our ailments. <laughs> let's speed it. Let's speed it on up, Peppers. How All did right. you become a libertarian? Give us the moment. When was the epiphany? All right. Fast forward to the 2008 election. Um, I'm going to guess that the Veterans for Ron Paul T-shirt has something to do with this story. Actually, that's more of a 2012. <laughs> okay. Um, but. Uh, Anyway, so I'm looking at John McCain, I'm looking at Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, and mm -hmm. I, I wasn't impressed. Right. So I remembered that I knew this uh, libertarian guy a few years back that uh, he, he wouldn't really talk much about his views, but I, I, uh, it would come up in conversation from time to time. So I decided, you know what? Who, who do the libertarians have? You know, it couldn't be worse than these guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> depends on who you ask now. <laughs> you picked a bad yeah, year. You picked a I, bad I year to look at the obese kids. And then it was Bob Barr and Wayne Allen Root. Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> it was the headphones. If you guys are cool, we'll keep oh, yeah, going. Uh, as long as you can <laughs> hear me, I'm good. I can. So you, you fall in love with Mr. Bob Barr. He convinces you that liberty burns bright in his heart and in yours. Yes, yes. Uh, well, I mean, there were a few uh, small nuances about him that I really liked. Uh, and must like, the, like the part that he hates gays. and. Well, I didn't I'm just know kidding. That that's not time. fair to all our Georgia friends. It's, you know, <laughs> he, re he reversed himself. Hey, by the way, in a totally unrelated manner, he announced that he's running for Congress this week as a Republican. Yep. Yeah, when, you, when you start a sentence with in a totally unrelated manner, that's how tangents start. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay, we're cutting off Chris. <laughs> right. Go ahead. It's the first time Creighton has ever cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? It's a, it's a Twilight Zone. Usually I'm like, Creighton, stop talking. Get cut off. Get it's that no car down. No I jokes. No more. <laughs> but I have to say, the, the LP, you know, they, they really um, – they really coached him pretty well on, on the rhetoric because I would see Bob Barr in interviews, and CNN, MSNBC, they were not softballing questions to him. They sure. were they were asking him the most legitimate questions I've ever heard on, you know, broadcast television. And uh, he would answer. The most important part was he would answer the question they asked. Right. And then he'd always he'd always have the free market solution for the question that they asked. And these were things that were very unintuitive to me at the time. And so it, he convinced me of the rhetoric. I voted for Bob Barr. I found out about a few things about Bob Barr after the election. Um, you, it was like Ace Ventura when you woke up in the shower and you're like, I can't get can't, burn can't. your clothes in a trash yeah. can. <laughs> All right. So let's, because I am, in, was a man. I'm in a very similar position as you. So let's start this, this first topic this week. And so from there, you fall in love with the libertarian philosophy and then you join y'all and. Yeah. Hey, yeah. And eventually, I became the uh, anarcho-capitalist that you guys see before you. Right. So, but let's talk about Bob Barr and Wayne Allen Root because uh, I, I, have to? I think it's relevant because I think it's an interesting topic considering Bob Barr announced this week. On the day that DOMA is discussed in the Supreme Court, it's about to be overturned, and Bob Barr was the person that uh, – Shepherded Doma through the Defense of Marriage Act, and I just found out today he was having an affair mm -hmm. when he when he offered it. That is correct, and you know it's always a good what thing when you. What is it about people from Georgia? I don't know. <laughs> what is it about New politicians? New Georgia. Georgia. Bob Barr. So I'm kidding. Georgia. On the very day that you Georgians. announce your congressional campaign, you certainly don't want to be on the Daily Show with a clip of you saying, "I think gay people is burning in hell." You know that kind of stuff. <laughs> But I do think that Bob Barn raises issue. an interesting question. Uh, now, you, all, all four of us in the room here are former Republicans. Joe, just sort of, Joe, were you a Democrat? I don't think you really were. Uh, yeah, I, ca I called myself a Democrat, and I voted Democrat. Okay. So the four of us are Republicans, and you're a former Democrat. Uh, I'd be uh, 
be a bit careful about that present tense usage. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, did I use present tense? <laughs> you did you use know. present Some tense. of us in the room are Republicans. Yeah, I don't. I looking don't over at Craig it. Um, <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say I vote Republican sometimes. Yeah, me neither. I am. I vote Libertarian all the time. <laughs> I've always Every registered time. Yay, cool. I like it to be courted. And you seduced. vote LP. <laughs> I I did vote for a Democrat in the last election because I really hated the Republican, so I wanted to punish him. <laughs> um, now, at but what isn't that supposed to be against the rules, man? No. Every time on. I've always brought up that argument, oh, we should do this because it's the the worst guy, and like, oh, that's stupid. LP's better. Screw you, buddy. I'm right. <laughs> so, at what point does a person become redeemed? Because I would argue that in Bob Barr's case. Bob Barr served on the LNC, which anyone who's familiar with the Libertarian National Committee knows that serving on the LNC is not a special treat. It is one of the worst things on the planet that you could possibly do. It is torture. It's like... How so? It like, just is the worst. It just... The LNC is constant infighting. It's like... Oh. It is basically... So it's like the Libertarian Party. It's basically the purgatory <laughs> of politics. No, because the Libertarian Party at the grassroots level, if you're, you know, we're in Johnson County, Indiana right now. Johnson County is having their county convention right now, electing leadership. They're going to go out and they're going to elect candidates and they're going to go out and do grassroots efforts and they're actually doing stuff. The LNC is the purgatory of the National Libertarian Movement Was because they go and they sit in a room and they argue about stuff and then they never do anything except churn money usually for ballot access in states where you're never going to get ballot access. So it's like Yao. It, when, I think Yao's effective. I'm, <laughs> and, and by the way, they're not as affiliated with this podcast. Yes, not at all in any way, shape, or form. So <laughs> Bob, Barr, Bob Barr serves his time and says libertarian like you Hail phrase, Mary. I like how you phrase that. That's how much I would never want to be on the LNC. He served his time. He served his time. He and did he his did service penance. to the community. <laughs> it's like libertarian prison being on the LNC, and he comes out a better man and says, I want to run for president as a libertarian. He consistently went across the nation, recanted his former beliefs like DOMA. You know, Even to this day, when he is writing articles in the Atlanta Journal-Constipation, as uh, Bortz calls it, says, you know, he talks a lot about civil liberties. You know, he talks about libertarian things. Isn't he big on drones? Like, the drones were he, his big thing. Yeah, drones. that's yeah, one thing he really kind of fought against. On his, uh, blog. Even Wayne Allen Root, who gets a lot of hate from libertarians, and I know that there are people on the podcast right now that are not big Wayne Allen Root fans, and, you know, I think Wayne is a columnist and an infotainer. Wayne likes to go out and give information as entertainment, and if you take him in that grain of salt and you say this guy is trying to be entertaining while talking about this about <coughs> politics, then you can deal with a little bit better. But He's like Dennis Miller. All right. You know, yeah. you know, and he was on the Andy Dean show. I heard him this week, which is a national podcast, and it was like, now you with this libertarian stuff, you always talk about civil liberties and drones, and drones are great, and Wayne's like, no, they're not. So – even if they're not pure libertarians, these two guys carried the banner in 2008, and they had moved significantly from the Republican, conservative, ditto-head mindset to a more libertarian front. They weren't pure enough, so eventually they get driven out and they go back to the Republican Party because of the infighting and the BS that we have talked about time and time again on this podcast. So, But it, it raises a question that I think every libertarian has to ask themselves. At what point do we become pure enough, or when do you believe that somebody in the libertarian movement has changed? Let's say Rush Limbaugh tomorrow, and I, actually we have a great example in Glenn Beck who we've kind of talked about, but let's say Rush Limbaugh specifically comes out tomorrow and says, I have rethought the last 35 years of being on radio. I've been wrong about everything. Reagan's cool, but Calvin Coolidge is my new hero. I'm a libertarian. <laughs> he starts talking about libertarian stuff and quoting Hayek and all that stuff. How long does it take, or what does he have to do or say for libertarians to believe and accept him? So let's start with Peppers. Uh, I, I for one, don't believe that there's such thing as absolution or penance. You know, if you've done something wrong, you know, that thing's going to be in your past forever. Not, not to say that we can't forgive, but... I mean, just... voting, voting for George W. Bush or advocating for... George Herbert Walker Bush is not an equivalent to murder, so let's not yeah. oversimplify it. I mean, holding wrong beliefs, if you eventually 
adopt the right beliefs according to us, then you know how long does it take, or what is it? What uh, I I think uh, you, know, you can't really put a number on how long it takes, or you know exactly what you have to do. I think the big thing is you have to, in, in the liberty circle, you have to show your value through activism before people take you seriously. And somebody like Rush Limbaugh, you know, he might have to do a sizable amount of uh, activism, but somebody in his position can accomplish a lot of activism in a single sitting with the number of people who listen to him, how he affects popular culture. I mean, I think, I think if he did have a change of heart to, to pro-liberty ideas, then um, I, I don't think it would take long for him to, you know, to really prove himself. Here's, here's a follow-up question. Rush Limbaugh, as he is today, let's say he doesn't change at all, he doesn't want to save liberty or anything like that, is it a – would it be bad for the liberty movement to say we support Rush Limbaugh on these issues and we'll build a coalition with him on these issues? Or is the fact that he has been antagonistic to libertarians in the past, particularly on foreign policy, mean that we have to reject him in every way, shape, or form? Well, I think the great thing about you know libertarians is – we have to do a lot of uh, independent research. We have to look, we have to read between the lines on everything. We have to do our own research. And I think that's really conditioned ourselves to really seek truth. And um, another oh, one consequence of that is we can respect people without respecting every single quality. Sure. Like we we have uh, various ideas from Thomas Jefferson that we do respect, and that's what we use him as a symbol of. And we don't necessarily use him as a symbol of uh, pro-slavery, which he was. Let's um, talk. Let's ask Greg. Greg is the token Republican on the show. When will you be redeemed? I don't think that I'll ever be redeemed. But I don't think that I will redemption would ever be. Like I, I already <laughs> vote Libertarian for candidates. I already mm -hmm. support him. But I don't think that I could, in fact, be a party member because I, the biggest issue I have is pragmatism sure and so i am not a true believer i i in theory am on you know i in theory i support the ideas you guys do I, I stand right with you but i am not one to stand firm when i can see a slight reduction in liberty if i think it's feasible so if i could ever be considered a libertarian i think it's going to be at you guys are already you, i mean you guys have the momentum yeah but you're somebody who i mean if you read the blog at we are libertarians.com and you read your writings you clearly have an understanding and are working towards probably a more anarcho-capitalist view. You know, we'll get you eventually. Oh no, you you <laughs> have me in theory. Like I I am there. Right. But but I don't think people would want me because I would still like for instance Rand Paul. That I think that's going to be a huge litmus test. Sure. So now, what that, you're, what you're saying is you're trying to be wooed. No, I'm not trying to be wooed. Oh, okay. I will I will gladly join you guys, but I don't want to be ostracized when I support a Republican candidate. Right. So at what point can we – and then I'll ask you this, and then we'll ask Joe if Joe will answer the same question. At what point does a major figure in politics move from – I mean, what can they do or say to make libertarians accept them? Because unfortunately, like, that is the mindset, you know, like, well, you have to do certain things to be accepted by libertarians, and maybe that's a discussion that we'll touch upon in just a second, but – I mean, Bob Barr never seemed to really gain acceptance. He was always, by a very vocal crowd of the Libertarian Party, rejected because of stuff he said and did in 1996. Well, it was 2008. It was 10 years later, and it still had not sort of – sorry wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. you know, so at what point can we take somebody's word that they have moved into the Libertarian quadrant? Um, when they formally change – in my opinion, when they formally change the party that they're with, when they actually mm -hmm. identify, if you don't, if you don't accept that, or the majority of libertarians don't accept that, you think that I'm not uh, sincere in my efforts to actually join you guys. I can't do anything about that personally, but I, me, I would consider you a libertarian at that point. Sure. If you repent. I guess it goes back to my Christian raising, <laughs> that when you, you repent and you confess yeah, your yeah. sins, you're ready to go. Joe Ruiz, what are your thoughts? What what does a liber what does a figure that wants to, you know, cater to the libertarian movement have to do or say to be credible? And do you find Bob Barr and Wayne Root and some of those guys credible? And why or why not? 
Uh, first of all, uh, I wanted to go back and say quoting Hayek is not necessarily essential to being libertarian. Uh, secondly, it's about actions and whether or not they match up with your words. I'm okay accepting somebody like, uh, you know, who, who has been from another party saying that they're a libertarian if they genuinely seem to believe libertarian ideals. You got Bob Barr, you got Wayne Allen Root. Wayne Root was a conservative. I mean, his daughter, I don't know if it's her first name or her middle name, but is, is Reagan, named after Ronald Reagan. Uh, he was a Goldwater conservative. He called himself a libertarian, uh, and he said in his book, the conscious of a libertarian that he wrote that he was going to run and win the president of the United States in 2020 or something like that. Um, here's the thing. People didn't dismiss or not accept Bob Barr and Wayne Allen Root, in my opinion, because they weren't libertarian enough. They dismissed Bob Barr and Wayne Allen Root because they were Bob Barr and Wayne Allen Root. Uh, Gary Johnson was a Republican, right? Right. And when he decided to come over to the LP, uh, while he felt probably that he had to prove himself to some of the more purist libertarians and some right, I think everybody for the most part accepted him and embraced him during his campaign. And I thought he did a fantastic job because he was sincere, he was authentic, he was humble. You could tell that the man was a more of a libertarian than some conservatives or Republicans turned libertarians who had run in the past. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I mean, if you compare Bob Barr and Wayne Allen Root to Gary Johnson, Johnson has been a member of the Libertarian Party for a long time and was a Republican governor around the time that Romney was governor and, you know, maintained a Libertarian presence. And actually the reason he kind of, you know, became a prominent figure afterwards was his work uh, in the uh, pro-legalization movement with marijuana. You know, and, and so he had always kind of held libertarian standards, but he was a much more fresh – I mean he was a much fresher case of leaving the Republican Party and joining the LP. You know, you could make a much better case that he was doing it out of, uh, you know, saying, well, I need to further my political career, so I'm going to jump parties. And I don't mean that to sound bad because I love Gary Johnson. I thought he was a great candidate for us. At the time, I thought Bob Barr was a good candidate because I, I thought he went on CNN – and he went on these major media outlets, and he presented the libertarian case well for us. He didn't to people within the party, and I'd say probably 30%, 40% of the membership just kind of left and stopped supporting the party. And to this day, you still have those kind of those arguments. So I think that's a really good point. I think if you look at Gary Johnson, Gary leaves the Republican Party and immediately joins the presidential race for the libertarian party. So, Greg, your thoughts? Uh, I think one thing, though, is don't forget, I mean, he did run in the Republican primary. He, he didn't win, but he did run in it. And then right. also, being a governor is a lot easier than being, like, in Bob Barr's position at the House of Representatives. Sure. You never have to vote on foreign policy issues. They can't come back to haunt you. So it's definitely a, a structural benefit. Now, I, I just have a real quick an anecdote about, uh, about Bob Barr. And uh, I remember I met uh, Walter uh, Walter Block at uh at Purdue. I actually drove him back to his uh, libertarian hotel. status sealed. Yeah, yeah, Walter right. Block, and then you drop it on a libertarian podcast. That, hey, I was hanging out with Walter Block. Oh I, yeah, nailed it. it. He told me nailed to, it. He told me to call him Walter. <laughs> Just call me Walter. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, Block yeah I've, my father. I've also driven uh, Tom Woods to the airport, and uh, uh, my brother and I ambushed Ron Paul and got pictures with him. <laughs> Um, Could you imagine if these two jumped out of the bushes? At you? Oh my God! We want a picture. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to connect with anybody who's connected with We Are Libertarians, go to wearelibertarians.com and go to the About page, and you'll uh, see a link to Pepper's Facebook page. So you can connect with him and get a get a good look at these at I, this fine young man. I like to be connected with. So but, uh, and I meant fine in behavior. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, all right, great. Oh, did you oh. ever finish your point? Uh, yeah, I uh, I didn't just want to name drop. I also wanted to oh, tell, okay. tell a quick anecdote. I you should, should just stick with the name drop, man. <laughs> yeah. Your libertarian uh, credos are sealed, man. Uh, he uh, <laughs> he asked uh, the group of us, you know, uh, why were we were libertarians, and I I mentioned my Bob Barr story, and he said, well, at least Bob Barr is good for something. <laughs> yeah, I you know I met a lot of people who were brought into the Libertarian Party by by Bob Barr because of his media work. So, Creighton, do you have any thoughts now that you're joining us here on the podcast? Uh, you have, because we have a brand new board, which we'll discuss in a, in a few moments, 
uh, I've been able to mute Creighton's microphone because he has been doing everything but paying attention to anything that is going on on the no, podcast. No, I've been listening. You went outside. I had bathroom. <laughs> you came back in. You hey. went to the bathroom for 20 minutes. No. Then what? you came back in, no. and then you got another beer. And if you fast forward to like minute 25 or 20 on the on the YouTube, you can see the video video pouring. Then you come back, and then you sit down, you get back up, you drop your microphone three more times, you go over, you put some chew in your mouth, and then you come back and you sit down, and then you start talking with your mic off. You're, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> you want to pour this beer over <laughs> In his defense, he, that was a killer pour. It was a killer, <laughs> was it not? It was perfect. The top of the phone it was, was perfect level it, with the top of the phone. And glass. it's so funny because I look at everybody on the video, and I watch Creighton on the video when he talks and everything. And I just look down at the little chiclet as Joe's talking, and it's, like, right in front of the video. The beer is being poured in, like, a perfect fashion right in front of it. It looks like a, it looks like a, a commercial. So, Joe. Hey, Goose Island, that was you. <laughs> that so, was your beer. Sponsor us. Please. <laughs> yeah. Brought to you by 312. <laughs> so, any thoughts on redemption and when we ought to take major libertarian figures seriously, Creighton? Um, thank you. All right, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually have some legitimate thoughts. Um, redemption on libertarian figures. I think that there's a point where we shouldn't even be talking about redemption. You can I mean, that is that uh, hello? hello? Is that a kid? Joe, is that one of your kids? <laughs> no, no, sorry. My wife had said something, and I had accidentally un unmuted the microphone. Uh, okay. okay. Sorry, we said hi. Well, anyway, um. I think I think that libertarians put a little bit too much emphasis on the whole redemption factor. I think I think there's a point where if somebody's good, I mean I, I mean I've said this a million times. If somebody's good on five issues, then partner with them on those five issues. I mean it's not like oh we've got to call them a libertarian or something. It's just like why we we don't need to be throwing people. We don't need to be driving people away from the movement and away from helping us because they disagree with us on some issues or they, they can't call, legitimately call themselves a libertarian by how we define it. I think that we need to stop being such a club and be more of a, be more of a, a group of people who are willing to build coalitions with individuals on certain issues and certain things to help grow the movement. And just to just to source somebody who has a lot of weight in our circles. Ron Paul did this all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at uh, Audit the Fed. He partnered with Bernie Sanders on Audit the Fed. Bernie Sanders is a freaking socialist. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think you make a really good point, and I've set this, this question up in a specific way because that's the mindset that most people have. We have to try and force people into the libertarian box or force them out of the libertarian box. I think it's important to for every person listening and every person who calls themselves a libertarian or a voluntarist or a minarchist or a constitutional republican or an anarchist or an anarcho-capitalist, whatever you call yourself, understand the meaning of the words, understand the principles of what you call yourself, and stand on those principles and find where you have common ground with other people. But you don't have to try and force people into your box, and if they don't agree with you on stuff, you don't have to try and force them out because, honestly, that just wears me out. I just can't, like, when it comes to libertarians at this point, after five, six years of consistent daily contact, like, of, are you, are you pure enough? Did you score high enough on the quiz? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> bro, calm down, all right? Peffers. Um, one thought I'd like to bring up is, uh, as an anarcho-capitalist, I see I, I don't really judge people on their purity per se. I just see everybody as future anarcho-capitalists. So right, <laughs> I, mean, I I actually I'm gonna write about it a little bit either later on next week. Greg, I I, I will say Greg is going down the rabbit hole. Well, no, oh, yeah. no, I'm, I'm totally first, practical. First, how many peppers? How many Rothbard books have you read? Um. Sadly, I'm behind on my reading. I'm a very slow re reader, but oh. I have a Audible.com subscription. Hey, hey, hey! Clearly, clearly. Oh, and I just status. finished uh, Friedrich Bastiat's The Law, which makes a pretty effective argument for minarchism. But I don't believe that. I don't believe in the monopoly of force. How many great 
books on audible.com are there for libertarians? There are a bunch. Like Thomas Woods has his whole collection on there. Uh, Peter Schiff has his whole, whole collection on there. Walter Block only has one or two, but uh, I, I yeah, just... So tell you what, everybody who's listening, you hear it at the beginning of the show. If you want a free copy of any of these books, you go to our website, we'relibertarians.com, look on the sliding banner at the top, you'll see the Audible logo, click on it, sign up, you get a free audio book, you get a month free of audible.com, and then you're off to the races. You can get a free audio book copy of anything that he just said, courtesy of We Are Libertarians, it helps us out, and uh, it helps us fund the big plans that we're going to talk about a little later in the podcast. And that is our version of an obscene profit center. That, yeah, all, yeah, obscene. It's obscene how few of you have taken <laughs> us up on that offer. <laughs> and if, if I may go over a few of the features that, uh, that haven't been mentioned, um, one of the things is uh, when you sign up for, on a subscription basis, you get a credit every month. But if you buy books on top of those credits that you get, it's uh, 30% off for right. members. And then on top of that, you can choose to get a subscription from either uh, the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times. And uh, so you can sit and have the the, uh, the Wall Street Journal read to you. Uh, yeah, I get the I get the New York Times audio podcast sent to me every morning on my iPhone. I get to listen to it. It's really, really cool. So, so you guys can go down the rabbit hole while you're driving. Exactly. Yeah, and I do a lot of driving. <laughs> he does. Yeah. <laughs> so, Greg. Oh, what did you want me to Yeah, what was, your, what was your point? Oh, no, I was just going to say I didn't mean to say it like that. I, I was, was like, say, what is your point, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Radio in, rega- in regards, in regards to, to purity, I mean, I may be a, a scumbag Republican, but I was reading Hoff's critique of Marx before wow. I came over tonight. So <laughs> I think that may be a litmus test. So if not only are you least... a new libertarian, you're also a virgin. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> so Hop you, took did, it. Did you, <laughs> did you read Nerd Moment for a minute? Did you read the praxeological one? I did. Isn't it mind blowing? I'm, I'm using it for something I'm going to write later this, like probably next week, as like sort of a political philosophy that's impervious for libertarians. Dude, no, he tries that. I know he, he tries that. I don't know if he. Succeeded. I think he missed on something. Yeah, that's what I want to add. I don't. To I don't think he succeeded. But the the the, epistemolo- the epistemology one. Yeah. Freaking mind blowing, man. All right. Well, now that we've lost every listener, yeah. I was going to say they're all saying, "What are they talking about?" Right. Hey, hey, <laughs> anyone, anyone who knows what we're talking about, uh, Hans Hermann Hoppe, and the, the essay is called On Praxeology and the Praxeological Foundations of Epistemology, which is, sounds fancy, but the long and short of it is, is he explains how, like, you can, re- you can use reason to say something that is true about reality outside of your mind. And it's what? irrefutable. Mm-hmm. So that I mean, that sounds fancy, but I mean, it really <laughs> it's it, it, no, it sounds it sounds like really esoteric and stuff. But if you really get into the essay, it is perfect sense. It makes so much sense, and it's unbelievably mind blowing. Mm-hmm. I mean, this this for philosophy majors who may listen to the podcast, uh, Immanuel Kant made this distinction between the a priori and the a posteriori, which is essentially saying. He made a distinction between things that are that, that make sense in your head, because they're they're uh, they they're based upon reason alone, and then things that make sense in reality because they're based on observations. Mm-hmm. And he said that there what he he was never able to bridge the gap between the two to say there was a way to say anything true about the world outside of your mind using logic that starts in your head. So the Cra- logical versus the empirical. Yeah, he mm-hmm. he Hoppe does uh, he actually manages to bridge that gap. In this essay, and it's unbelievable. It is. It really is. Even as a dirty Republican, it is unbelievable. Yeah. And if you if you want an easier read and you're newer to the Liberty Movement, I would suggest defending the undefendable oh, by yeah. Walter Block. Walter Block. Block. Which that if book you is go fun. AudibleTrial.com <laughs> forward slash W A L. Once again, that is www.audibletrial.com forward slash W A L. You can get. What is it? Defending the Undefendable. And I have listened to it on audible.com, and I loved it. It's so. also a great bathroom read because each uh, <laughs> each chapter is an independent essay. So if you if you set it down for several weeks and then pick it back up, 
you're not lost. Or right. if you have IBS and spend a lot of time in there. <laughs> Basically, the gist of the book is that Walter Block takes a, a – a different view of those who we find. To tell you the truth, he, he basically trolls. he trolls. The whole book is him right. trolling. <laughs> him trolling. <laughs> His so. first chapter is on prostitution, so he's, right. he's not shy. So, all right, let's let's get into a different topic. Let's talk about uh, media and the news, because frankly, if you follow the news, this has been like I don't know if maybe it's a post Easter slump, but there is like nothing really in the news other than Korea, which like really. <laughs> so there is not much going on in the news. So we wanted to have a discussion this week about new media versus old media. What is what are some things that you do to? What are some news sources that you read? What are people that you like to to read on a daily basis? That kind of fill you in. Just to throw it out there to listeners who want to know more about libertarianism. Let's start with what you read, and how you read it. And my favorite is wearelibertarians.com. dot com. That's my favorite. That's my homepage, and it should be yours, too. Uh, we are so libertarians, my homeboy. You, Greg, are Mr. Smarty Pants here on the podcast when it comes to current events, and Creighton is Mr. Smarty Pants philosophy. And so what – still, dude, you glazed over all last week on gay marriage, but then somebody min mentions Hans Hermann Hotzkiss. You would go crazy. <laughs> You're like, here, I have a 20 minute soliloquy on the undefendable of the praxomologic elite. <laughs> that was beautiful, Smig. It was. That was beautiful. Not pure. <laughs> Out. <laughs> All right, well, take the ski again. <laughs> the real question is when has Chris Spangle redeemed himself for the Libertarian Party? Exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm still waiting for James Neat to come back on so we can continue our debate over mutualism. Oh, we have to have Neese on because Neese is – if you haven't heard James Neese in a while, he is quite the character. He is basically like – Thug you, life, bro. Thug life. If you have to go to the wearelibertarians.com forward slash about and look up James Neese's Facebook page, friend this kid because he is 4chan and Reddit. If they had a baby and he was born into a man, it would be James Neese. <laughs> he is a living, breathing Reddit and 4chan offspring. <laughs> He's like, he's like. When your redeeming qualities are the part of you that's read it, that is all. <laughs> smart, and you can yeah, talk to him about philo phil philosophy, philosophy, philosophy for hours on end, and he is just so smart. And you, I can barely hang with him. But then all of a sudden he'll just be like, "So yeah, bro, I'd like th thug life." <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna, I'm going down to Bloomington to go hook up with some, some. I think what to say. Uh, I can't say that. Uh, yeah, you can't say that on air. Yeah. Even though it's internet radio and Indiana talks don't. Yeah. Hey, I so, think in the book Defending the Undefendable, there was actually a chapter hidden about James Neese. It's somewhere <laughs> tucked in the back. Yeah, <laughs> it's real small because you cannot defend James Neese. <laughs> Thug life. All right, so Greg Lenz, what is your routine every day? What are the, some outlets that you read that you like to read? And, uh, you know, so Sarah, let's ask you uh, the Sarah Palin question. What newspapers and magazines do you like to read? Well, I like all of them, really. <laughs> no, um, me, I like to read, I, I, really, reason, I that's my go-to. But then I like to get perspectives from other places. I don't think, I'm not of the mind, and we'll get into this as far as media goes, but there is any place you can get absolute truth and just totally neutral coverage. Mm -hmm. So I take the approach of getting um, as much news like from different outlets as possible. So I like the National Review. They're really good on economic arguments. Um, and then I like Salon.com and Slate.com on things on foreign policy and civil liberties. Um, Libertarian Reddit's got great news on there. Um, and then as far as like current events, though, I like real clear politics, real clear policy, um, history, and religion. Yeah, I like all the – they do a really good job. Um, Dig is a big one for me, more though for pop culture type of things. And then BuzzFeed Politics is starting to pick up a little bit. Yeah, they hired away uh, Ben Smith from Politico, and yeah. he now edits that page, and so it's gotten a little more respectable. It's gone from, like, Lindsay Lohan crashes her car, and here's ten things that will make your teeth whiter to actual news. It's, yeah. It's kind of a better news aggregator. L Lindsay Lohan crashing her car, is it news? <laughs> <laughs> no. Not on isn't. the tenth time. Not on the tenth <laughs> time. <laughs> so, Pepper, anything else, Greg? Uh, no, I mean, that's pretty much where I go. Those are, those are my go-tos. I, I really low like more analysis than I do actual news coverage. Right. That's more what I'm interested in. I'm sorry we're boring you, Creighton. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> that first one you read on a daily basis. Well, I mean, Greg's answer is pretty good, so it's a tough act to follow. Right. And, I read uh, all of them. Is that what you're saying? That was the <laughs> that was the Peppers version of Sarah Palin saying, "I don't read anything." Now, I've got an answer. It's just not as good. Uh, <laughs> and then, you know, on top of that, uh, I decided to start writing blogs for We Are Libertarians during a news slump. That was a big. That was a big. Uh, yeah. Your that, article was good though. Really oh. good. Thank you, thank you. And uh, I'm trying to figure out what my follow-up will be. <laughs> can't say I read it. Oh, you can't say that I'm you just did? <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, so there are a few sources. I tend to go more the podcast route because uh, I spend seven hours driving uh, on my typical work day. So uh, right now it's Peter Schiff. Um, my <laughs> uncle. <laughs> are you really like, are you tired, Creighton? Are you tired? Go ahead, Pepper. Have some more dip, Creighton. What are some pod? What are some podcasts that you like to listen to? I like to listen to the Peter Schiff show. I I listen to him on Wall Street on Spun, and then now this the Peter Schiff show is his uh, syndicated program. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to listen to. Uh, I just started listening to my uncle's uh, radio station or radio show. He does a four-hour radio show for uh, AM five sixty over in uh, Chicago. Uh, Big John. Uh, I've been listening to that right lately. You don't know your uncle's last name, do you? Uh, you no, clearly Big struggled. John Howell is just okay. no. Big John Big Howell, John. you're like Big John. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you shook your head like you didn't know who your uncle was. I use a lifeline. I know who my uncle is. He, I just, uh, I'm trying to remember if his nickname is just Big John or if it's Big John Howell. I, right. Um, and he got his. He's he's pretty conservative, so I, I agree with him on some things, but not all things. He he actually used to spin discs for. Um, for a uh, country music station before he got into politics. Um, yes, that's if you're on the right and you're listening to talk radio for your information and that is your only source, you are listening to former DJs who made their career big on morning zoos and cocaine. And not that there's anything with, wrong with not getting a college degree because Lord knows I went to college for four years. And as <laughs> Pepper said before the show began, I mean, college degree is – like it's graduation like, is such a strong word <laughs> right so like you know but it i don't know i listen to dj's talk and i'm like eh, maybe you don't know as much as you think you know perhaps i should find other outlets <laughs> right and uh, then um also i uh i like to listen to penn sunday school by yeah. penn Gillette and uh, michael Godot. um i think that's a pretty solid podcast because it'll because he uh he pays attention to a lot of pop culture, uh, as well as politics, and he'll talk philosophy. I don't agree with him on everything, especially uh, his stance on intellectual property. But I, I acknowledge that he, uh, that is really tough for him to take a anti-intellectual property stance. Him being an entertainer and all. Right. Uh, so I, I do respect that. Let's ask. Uh, let's get Creighton's opinion. Creighton. Oh no, he's in the bathroom again. Oh no, that was. <laughs> <laughs> girlfriend over there. Is, Lene. Is, hey, he, Lene. is he okay today? Like he's like super weird today. Oh, uh, you know. I don't know. I don't know. You think he's been hanging out with Glenn Beck from the '90s? Now he's yelling. At us. Yeah. No, Apparently he's listening now. And, uh, I gotta, I gotta say, you know, I have a lot of political friends on Facebook. So, uh, well, when I'm looking for articles, I generally just look at my newsfeed. Spangle, what about you? No, I'm gonna, I want to ask. I want to. Joe Ruiz. Joe, what do you read and listen to on a daily basis? Oh, uh, you know, I hate to sound like Sarah Palin, but a little bit of everything. I mean, if information was like a big buffet, I kind of pick a little bit from every plate. Um, I work at a news station. It's conservative leaning, but like I'm hammered with uh, the stories of today like all day. And so by the time I get home, I don't do a whole lot of, you know, reading unless something really catches my eye. Um, yep. When I... When I first became a libertarian, I did a lot of reading, a lot of the, you know, the authors and the books that you guys were mentioning earlier, you know, and and uh, it got to the point where it was just kind of like main idea, main idea, government screws things up, uh, free markets and individuals do things better, and once I started agreeing with that, I didn't really need to hear everybody else's complex version of that, and so I stopped reading as many of those books uh, as I used to, and, and more or less now, um, if it's not we are libertarians, if it's not being drilled with the news all day at work, uh, when I'm home, I just kind of want to be entertained. And so I look at 
the Blaze, and I look at the Huffington Post, and I look at those things, uh, you know, because they're kind of entertaining to me. Uh, I don't mind reading about Lindsay Lohan's car crash, regardless of how ridiculous that news might be. Creighton, what it's do you ridiculous anymore? Creighton, what do you read and watch and listen to? How do you get your news, and what are some outlets that you'd like that you'd recommend? Well, I, I don't really get as much news through like uh, mainstream websites as I used to. Usually, when I wake up in the morning, I, I I tend to watch Morning Joe. That's about the extent of my cable news watching. Um, and I really only watch about five minutes before I get sick of it and turn it off. <laughs> yeah. They they're a hit and miss show, but at least they're hit and miss. All the other ones are missed the whole time. It's not terrible. Yeah. Like that's the best that you can give a cable news program. They're not terrible. Yeah. So as far as like internet um, news, I have a I have an app on my phone that just basically has hundreds and hundreds of uh, various news sites, RSS feeds aggregated that I just kind of glance at. Um, but I'd say most of my news, the relevant news, I've, I've managed to get my Facebook news feed tailored to give me news that I like. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so mostly all the news stories, like the big news stories, whether it's the hot issue at the moment or something going on in the libertarian world, that tends to come through Facebook mm -hmm. um, or Twitter, um, but mostly Facebook. Um, but as far as news sites, I tend to read Reason. Um, when I feel like uh, reading some hefty stuff, I read the Mises articles. Um, they're great. Yeah, they are fantastic. They uh, <laughs> they're pretty good. I I I try and keep up with some like individuals. Like I I try and read uh, Robert Murphy's blog. I try and read Tom Woods' blog. Um, but that I mean that's really the extent of it. I guess so. As far as like general current events, I'd say I I read all of them because I literally have every internet news site you can think of. Uh, aggregated on my phone, um, whether it be uh, some Gawker to Politico to MSNBC to Slate to S Salon to Think Progress, Fox News, Drudge, all oh, they're all sure. aggregated. Do you actually – so you read it on the app, but you don't actually go to their physical website? Not unless the app is poorly formatted for that, that particular article is poorly formatted. Um, I use Pocket a lot. so Me too. Um, hey, I'm a big Pocket fan. It is. It's like uh, it's like Instapaper, only I think better and free, and free. So yeah, I I'm very similar to you guys. I actually because when Google Reader, I was always a Google Reader fan. Love Google Reader. I've kind of switched over to Feedly, which, which is, is Google, Google Reader. Which is Google Reader. It's cleaner, better format. Yeah, but here the Feedly is actually going to be able to save all of your uh, yeah. Your, Import Google them all in. Stuff but since Google Reader's going under. Yeah, so since that happened, I went and I went to all the sites that I like, and almost every site you can possibly think of were email newsletters. And then I set up a you know a Google a, a Gmail filter, so all the newsletters go to like a filter or tag. Dude, I did and that too. And yeah, you know what I have spent the last two or three years unsubscribing. You from have everything. Yeah, but you've got it's okay because I get like three hundred various newsletters a day probably more than that Ugh. but the, i have a filter on so it just filters right into the tag but and i've done that for probably a couple weeks and the places that don't have like their feed i have set up a feed burner and then i basically set up their feed with a feed burner and i email it to myself so it's kind of a whole process it takes forever to get that stuff but i like raw story for for my oh, yeah. left yep. for my left outlets i really seem to like raw story i think they have a lot of good stuff uh, I like Mediate. Mediate yeah, really has kind of a good uh, – it's sort of balanced, I, I would say. Uh, I like, um, obviously, Reason. I don't like LouRockwell.com. I don't either. Oh, no. I don't I, read it anymore. Just, you know, when it comes to LouRockwell.com, I know they're number one, but the fact is is that they just – it's depressing. I don't read it anymore. Yeah. They're too uh, conspiracy, man. Right. They really are. They they didn't, They weren't always like that. No, Lou Rockwell's they used not to, like They that. used to post – like that's where that was kind of what Mises is. They would post your your articles over history and e economics and stuff, and they would legitimate article original for the site. And then they'd post your like, how do you you know? Here's a uh, dieting tips, you know, stupid stuff. And it's just it's yeah, it's degenerated into just a bunch of conspiracy crap. Yeah, it, it's just tailored to a very specific sect of libertarians now, and it's just not it's not my bag. I think. 
uh, Thomas Knapp, it's Napster, K-N-A-P-P-S-T-E-R.com. He has an email newsletter that I think is pretty decent. Um, y you know, on the right, uh, I think the Blaze does an okay job. Just put, push Mittens off. Mittens is trying to cuddle with Greg and Peffer simultaneously. Hey. My slutty cat. I don't want to touch Mittens because I, I have cat allergies. Oh, okay, so well, not. I'm sorry. I, Mittens finally killed a man. I knew it was only a matter of time. <laughs> uh, so That's the only one you know. You don't read National Review at all? Uh, I do. I get the corner. I, I'll look at it. I like Jonah Goldberg, but I don't. Um, I actually have don't. a free subscription to National Review. Yeah. For being in school. I will not read the Weekly Standard. I have put my oh, foot no. down. Anything that the Weekly Standard says, Bill Crystal is just too Moronic. I like I like Fred Barnes, but I refuse to read anything they put out because Bill Crystal is an idiot. Town uh, Hall Red State aren't even worth pulling up anymore. No. Yeah, see, there's there's some on the right that you know I don't understand how they're so popular. It's like all the same crap. Over and over and over. Obama's not any good. Right. Michelle Malkin. World World News Daily, Newsmax, all that kind oh, of stuff. Oh yeah, those are just. I, I get their I get their info in my email box, but you know what? None of it is ever really the stuff that I find worthwhile. Is, um, I really like foreign policy. I think <laughs> foreign policy puts out some good stuff. It's pretty intense, though. I mean, you're talking about a minimum of two and a half pages per. Sure. You know, I mean, it's a it's a commitment to go through foreign I, policy I, articles. Yeah, I scan I scan stuff, but they link. They do a lot of linking. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to, I, I like the uh, the CNN radio news podcast. I think it's pretty decent at the end of the day. Coffee and Markets is a podcast that uh, they're sort of, they're they're fairly libertarian leaning. And um, Breitbart, that's one. Breitbart. Daily Beast, I'm just throwing out names. Daily Beast, you know, the Daily Beast has a couple really good, The Atlantic. I think The Atlantic is probably my favorite, The Wire. I think that's probably my favorite non, you know, I mean, it's probably left, but, you know, it's kind of... Oh, it definitely is. Hot yeah. air. Yeah. Uh, Politico, National Journal. I think, so, I think what we're identifying is funny, because I think it's so true that there hasn't been any strong thought leadership from the GOP in a very long time. Sure. And you see that based on the quality of the sites that are out there, right? Yeah, you look at the you look at the left sites versus the right sites oh, versus cool. the libertarian sites. You look at just just there is a site called uh, I think it's Liberty Three Hundred One. It is a great site. Daniel J. Mitchell from the Cato Institute usually has really strong articles. You've got all the the Mises guys like Jeffrey Tucker. They put out great stuff. United Liberty is a great blog. You know these are. Then you've got Reason and Cato and you know, the, and and we are libertarians is what what we're trying to give you daily commentary, daily links to the stuff that we like on Twitter and on our on our website. In so our, kind of in our uh, our paper. Our paper, yes. No uh, one, yeah. no one said the Daily Libertarian. No, but I said, <laughs> I said, but we're getting ready to talk about us because the podcast always must circle back to us. You know, what it comes down to is, as we had this conversation, very few of us mentioned right leaning sites. It's Drudge. We That's it. Drudge. And he's not. He doesn't make content. With the stuff that we find interesting, like the Atlantic, like Raw Story, Mediaite, probably lean more left than anything. The Blaze is not bad, but it always is, you can see the agenda clear as day that they're trying to push. I I probably am breaking the mold here by listening to a little bit more right leaning stuff. Sure. But, I, mean, I mean, I listen to. I listen to talk radio. I listen to Rush. I listen to Glenn Beck. Yeah, yeah, I listen to I listen to talk radio in the mornings and stuff usually, so I get some stuff in there. Uh, but I, that's not so much news as it is. I think the big Analysis. point, yeah. the big point here though, is like when we first got into the Liberty Movement, you had to do a lot of independent research. You had to, you had to listen to a lot of poorly tailored, so, or you had to wa read, watch, or listen to poorly tailored sources to yeah, try to most, get this. Yeah, most most libertarian news sites. So, it, but that that's yeah. changing. It's coming around. It's it's easier to find these books. It's easier to find these new new sites. And we are libertarians. dot com is doing a lot to bridge that gap. Yeah. Plug. All right, you're hired. So I like the plug. Oh, yeah, look at you. <laughs> Your <laughs> salary was, is zero dollars. I was listening. <laughs> I laughed my behind off because I was listening to America Now with Andy Dean. It's on on podcast. It's a syndicated radio show. And Wayne Allen Root was on, so I wanted to check in with our old buddy Wayne just to hear what he was up to, and he was up to his normal old shenanigans. And Andy Dean goes, Wayne, 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 
three plugs a show maximum. Seriously, you've got to stop. And I about crashed my car. I laughed so hard. It was so funny. You know, and so, so check out some of these sources. Maybe they'll help you. Uh, you know, especially off the air. Off the air is a podcast that our buddy Cody O'Connor does. LRN.FM has some really good shows. Um, if you go to WeAreLibertarians.com forward slash links, uh, or it's in the drop down menu, or scroll to the footer on the front page, you'll find the pages there. Go to links. And a lot of other libertarian sites linked uh, and other libertarian podcasts that you can listen to after you're done listening to this one. Um, Speaking of news, um, drumroll, Roger Ebert died. He I know. Yeah. I know. That was probably the saddest thing. Let's take a moment to eulogize Mr. Roger Ebert. Roger Ebert. You know, I I like movies. I'm, I, yeah, like, I know. That's I like the movies. majority of your and, analysis. And Ro yeah, Roger, Roger Ebert, he, was always, he always had a good knack for – for good stories. I mean, he was a miss sometimes. I, mean, he, I always I think recommend... Gave, I think he gave knowing two thumbs up. I um, would always recommend that if you listen to a podcast and you like this show and you want to jump back to a previous one of our podcasts, go back to episode 16. That's probably the best show that we have, have done up to, like, the new, which the new season. That? It was the one where our buddy Goose came on, your friend oh, from the military. Goose, Goose. And basically Creighton spent the whole episode saying, so, like, is military, is it like being in A Few Good Men? And, <laughs> <laughs> like, everything was a movie <laughs> reference. Uh, no, but Roger Ebert, man, he was, he was a good guy. He, uh, he, he had some good taste in flicks. And I think he, Roger uh, Ebert is a great example of experiencing the joy of life in the face of incredible tragedy. Here's a guy, and it makes me so depressed everything, every time I go through a Steak and Shake, where it's quoting like how Steak and Shake is his favorite restaurant, but the guy hasn't been able to eat for five years because he lost his whole jaw to cancer. And here is a person who used Twitter and writing and didn't lose a moment of joy. He was so excited just to be alive and to take joy and pride in the work that he was doing and just immersed himself into social media, and that became a great outlet for him. <laughs> Even despite the fact that he had tremendous issues with not having a jaw. You Did know? you ever watch uh, at the movies with Siskel and Ebert? Did barely. I mean, I no. was. I, was I, a kid. I mean, I I never watched a ton of it, but after you know the whole, I got I got older. I started watching some old stuff. Man, that was, that was pretty cool. It was just two dudes talking about the movies. Yeah, it was on Channel Ten, right? WGN. I don't remember. On Sundays. But yeah. It was just. It was right before Meet the Press. They would just talk about the movies, and it was it was pretty cool. I, I remember. Mean, I remember there was a parody on the old show, The Critic. <laughs> yeah, just it stinks. It. <laughs> there's there's a guy here locally named Matt Sosi. He's my buddy. Matt Sosi is basically a living, breathing the critic. I mean, if you've ever met, <laughs> it's certainly like John awesome. it. kind of. It's just <laughs> hilarious. So let's let's get back to talking about us. Um, let's let's talk about what we're doing on We Are Libertarians because if you listened to what we talked about, here's how we gather new, the news. We gather news. The the five of us. If I can do quick math. I don't know. I think Greg, gather Greg gathered. So yeah, actually, have you guys all set up? So anytime you tweet out an article, it comes directly right. to the paper. So here's here's what what we do. We basically <laughs> aggregate news through various sources. I do it through email. You do it through you know. How, do you just go to their website? I use a combination of Google. Oh no, I was I was saying websites. that Greg's the only one that keeps up on the news, and then he's the one who tells us what's going on. Right. On the podcast. <laughs> we are libertarians. dot com. We do it. We, we tell you what to think, so you don't have to. Right. So we basically none of us said we pick up a physical paper, no. none of us said we watch cable news, none of us I said, did, I said well you watched five minutes of cable news so it didn't count don't ruin my point and that, yeah <laughs> uh, don't ruin my point some of us listen to radio some of us are forced to because they work at uh, talk radio stations uh, I listen to podcasts you listen to podcasts Greg Joe uh, no. we all do not really I listen to ours yeah <laughs> nothing nothing nothing. Ends my day like the sound of my own. Voice. <laughs> really, oh, I, I hate that. Turn it on and mark out to myself. I know I sound like such an evil. <laughs> you should try meeting him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even disagree. I man. mean, if, if we want to take an objective like, approach, even, I, don't even like, I don't even like listening to the podcast anymore because I just sound like a douche. <laughs> <laughs> so we we all are immersed in new media, and old media is consumed, but in a totally different different way. And that is something that we've tried to do with We Are Libertarians. So let's talk about the various individual properties. Let's start with our managing editor of WeAreLibertarians.com. And why don't you talk about what we try to do on WeAreLibertarians.com for all those who uh, may not understand fully the, the stuff that we do just besides the podcast. We have a, a lot more people listening to the podcast than we have visiting the website and 
Facebook and the Twitter. So pick it up, people. Yeah, Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we do? What is our philosophy on We Libertarians? And for those and for those watching on YouTube, Joe is apparently in like the Blair Witch Project or something. <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, let me just. Seriously, go to Shake YouTube her. and like go to the end and look at Joe. Like the light has gone from the room and now it's just Joe staring. <laughs> it's Joe in his glasses. Yeah. Paranormal four. Yeah. So I'm I'm actually kind of worried that the uh, the reflection from the computer screen at some point like. There's going to be conspiracy theorists on our Facebook page like, he looked like a reptilian or something crazy. Um, no, but I think, uh, I think we are libertarians.com is, I think it's libertarianism with a smile. Um, I think that it is, uh, you know, there's, there's many different, if you, if you come across any group of libertarians and you talk to anyone, you're going to get several different takes on libertarianism, even though it's grounded by like one general principle uh, there's still just it's just kind of a mixed bag, and I think that we're libertarians. dot com uh, through its articles, different commentaries, and also the podcast does a really great job of being reflective of the libertarian culture, but it also does so in a way that's not really negative. It doesn't really impact people in a way that oh, those libertarians just always talk about the problems and they don't talk about solutions and some of the other things that get said about libertarians. I think that. When you listen to the guys on the podcast, or, or you guys, or when you uh, read some of the articles, I think that uh, despite pointing out some of maybe the injustices that go on in our political system or in political thought, uh, some of the things that are wrong, I think that you still generally find optimism that is maybe lacking elsewhere in the movement. And I think that's why so many people are you know, coming aboard. And, and they're uh, looking at WeAreLibertarians.com. I just think we do a really good job of representing sane, rational, libertarian thought, whether it's party libertarian or little L libertarian or Greg Glenn's or whatever. Uh, we just do a great job with it. Um, yeah, I think one of the goals that we, you know, we had done the podcast from March 8th, 2012 to the end of the year and we did it through the election season, and it was just it was just me, Creighton, and Galt, and it, it was a lot of fun, but it was always in the middle of the day. It was kind of rushed, and then I left the party, and it was an opportunity to kind of expand what we do. And, you know, we launched the, the site, and that's when we brought Joe and Greg on and then started bringing on contributors shortly after, like Peppers and so oh, that's that's good. Is that the end of our first season was when – we took a hiatus. Pretty, pretty much, yeah. I mean, so the, we got the end of season on my long drawn out soliloquy. Over yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that will live forever. It's forever. <laughs> and so, you know, we did it, and it was just sort of us doing a podcast and just kind of talking. And then, you know, when I left the LPIN, the Libertarian Party of Indiana, as their executive director, it was freeing because then I no longer had to represent. How people. ironic is that? Yeah, you left the Libertarian Party, and it was liberating. Well, because here's the deal: when <laughs> when you when you work for a political party, when I have the position that I had, your beliefs and your positions take a backseat to the beliefs and the positions of the broad majority of the people that pay your salary, the membership, essentially, and it's more along the lines of we pay you not to think about what you want to think about, but what. It represents everybody's interest. Nobody ever said that to me. It just, and it wasn't implied. It just is a moral thing that I felt like, ethically, I needed to, not really give out too much Ethics. of my own opinions. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're so, a representative of a large of, group of, of a, people. Of a large group of people. And so when I Good left, quote about representatives. And so when a representative owes the people not only his industry but his judgment, and he betrays them if he surrenders highly to their opinion. Boom, arrested. And so when I left the Libertarian Party of Indiana, Edinburgh. I said, let's form a blog site because Creighton was blogging, I was blogging, Galt, well, Galt well, tried. But let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> yeah. he, was, he was kind of blogging. He wrote two articles. <laughs> we love you, buddy. We, I got my, my high point of my blogging career was a summary of every chapter of Economics in One Lesson. Right. And that was about the extent of it. And so <laughs> that, that, is, that summary of man, economy, and state still coming, people. <laughs> yeah. And so we we decided to bring on Greg and and Joe and then contributors because what we want we are libertarians the website to develop into and it's led by Joe as our managing editor is a one stop shop for you so if you want to get a weekly roundtable of what happened in the news you listen to the podcast if you 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 well, we keep up with you on Facebook and Twitter we, we sort of goof off on Facebook more than than anything on Twitter we constantly I 
you know, all four or five of us tweet out articles that we find interesting that you can retweet and engage there. And we've grown the Twitter feed to like 10,000 people. It's amazing. And uh, Edward James Olmos. Just, Edward uh, James Olmos, the actor, yeah. followed, followed us. us. Yeah. He is such a good actor, by the way, and I was geeked when I found out he was following us. He did a guest spot, like a story arc on Dexter that was fantastic. Yeah, I don't know how he found us, but he's following us. Also following us is, if you listen to tw the Twit Network, Brian Bushwood from Not Safe for Work. He's following us. So we have a couple people. Rupert's following us, but come on. You know, we're pals. Yeah. <laughs> so Rupert's a stand-up guy. Yeah. So that's that's sort of the site, the goal for the site. What would you say we want to grow We Are Libertarians into, Joe? Uh, I would say that, it, you know, it would be um, bigger than some of those even, you know, at some point, those new sites that people go to so often, like I named like uh, the Huffington Post or the Blaze, but something that's directed at liberty-oriented uh, ideas and somewhere where, Instead of going to those sites like I do and just picking out articles, reading them, and then knowing that I disagree with them, somewhere where you know people that agree with liberty ideas can go and um, you know, agree with us. Sure, because I think when you go around to most libertarian sites, most of the design is dreadful. Which... The content is geared towards one specific type of libertarian, and we try to make it as broad yeah. as broad the spectrum of people. I mean, although... When is our website getting the face link? We are in the process of rebuilding the look of the website, so it'll be totally different here in hopefully a couple months. So, One, yeah. one feature that I would like to uh, suggest that you, you guys add is um, uh, I, there's external links. They should open into new tabs instead of redirecting your main window to these external That's just websites. basic HTML coding, man. What's the matter with you? Peppers, it's been nice having you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, you you've been writing a lot, and you also write a daily, the Daily Libertarian. Tell us a little bit about what that is, what you do with it, and what is contained uh, within it. Well, the Daily Libertarian, I, in my opinion, you know, it's a wall property. Like that was the whole point right. of it when I started it. So I thought, I thought that like they do. If you go to the Libertarian sites, like the best one I've been to for aggregation is Top Libertarian links. Yes. In, Everyone should, we forgot to mention it, go to toplibertarian.com. That is the best site to find basically anything libertarian, and I've been talking to him about launching a podcast section of that too. So, Yeah, it's, it's really good. Um, the Daily Libertarian is more going to be, instead of a strategy of giving you libertarian news and then you just nodding your head in agreement, I try to take uh, sources that maybe only agree on one or two issues bring those into discussion and then see if they can't help you refine your position even more. I guess it's more of a, I try to look at the daily libertarian as something that helps you grow by challenging your opinions and having to defend it every day, as opposed to going to a side every day, like, Oh man, you're preaching to the choir. I mean, I don't think that's constructive to do personally. Sure. And then as far as writing, I mean, I, I might've been a little bit overreaching this week, especially because I'm not a, a big L libertarian. I would definitely, though, I'd, Identify myself as a little ill. It's okay. You're welcome. Yeah, and, and <laughs> on, on we are libertarians. Right. But um, essentially, it was about turning back history. It was something we touched on in our last podcast, and I feel like there's sort of a determinism, especially when you look at the course of history, that Marx was right, and that we are on a march towards socialism, which we can argue how far along we are, and that he essentially determined the fate of humanity because of his political philosophy. And I just, I, I think that's terrible. And I wanted to say that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. We are going to fight that back. We are going to hit it as hard as we can to get us back to the, you know, as close to anarcho-capitalism as we can get that people won't just revolt. Yeah, so find that article. We'll put that in the show notes for this episode. So if and you're listening on you a know, podcast, check it out and share it. It, please. Upsets, it upsets me because usually I'm the one that writes the long, drawn-out, romanticized <laughs> on it stuff and now i've got to write something that's all fancy and but it, it inspires the, the gauntlet, <laughs> our, our conversation from the podcast sort of inspired so it's not it's not me so much as no a group a, effort yeah but you, you wrote it. i, I mean i wrote it but now, it was inspired now, now, now i got it now. divine inspiration <laughs> oh hey and a, and a side side note in in regards to we're libertarians i think that two words that could also be thrown in the pot are uh you know <laughs> despite some of our joking around i think credibility and professionalism 
because we choose not to discuss things like you know conspiracy theories and things that other libertarian sites. We want to be a news site that uh, is is libertarian oriented, but it also competes um, you know political thought with political thought in a professional uh, political way. Yeah, so we're yeah. not we're not here to stroke your ego if you're already a libertarian. I mean, I'm assuming that most people that listen to this uh, podcast and read stuff on the website have disagreed with me, disagreed with maybe Greg or Chris, or disagreed with anybody on here. So, I mean, we're not just here to basically uh, toot your own horn so that you can just find somebody else that reaffirms what you believe in. Because if we did that, then I wouldn't have any fun because I love making everybody mad. I, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's like people in a couple episodes like they hated Maya. But that's why we wanted to have Maya on is because a libertarian in the strain of Creighton does not get along with a libertarian in the strain of Maya. Both personalities. Why do we have to, but I mean, come on. On the, the Rand Paul episode. Uh, <laughs> it's almost like it was by design. <laughs> it's a, I mean, it's the, almost like conflict makes good uh, radio. Uh, <laughs> and and if, if, you're, you know, if you're listening right now, I, like, I think Joe would agree. We really, there's been a, like a hollow thought leadership perspective on a lot of places, especially like within libertarianism, and that's what I'm researching right now, is all of it's from economists. And that is not the easiest thing to digest and put together a coherent political philosophy. And we've done it with millennials from Indiana. Mm -hmm. And that is really kind of what we've collected the network of about. And I invited somebody else to start contributing today. I mean, I'm constantly looking for, you know, a group of, of people. So it kind of you you get more content that way because if Creighton decides not to blog for three or eight months, then you have several other people. Then <laughs> <laughs> so hey, I'm not saying anything because I am just as bad when hey, it comes to writing. But my last blog wasn't bad. It was great, it's, although it was over Rand Paul. <laughs> it was over Rand Paul, yes. And Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Oh no, wasn't your last one though on economics about the action axiom and thesis? Or was, was that before Rand Paul? I, I bet if you went right before. now to wearelibertarians.com, you can find out. It was before because I that guy re did a rebuttal that I still Three have yet. Three per show. Yeah, That's exactly I have, right. I have still yet to <laughs> I have still yet to rebut the guy's rebuttal. Which, <laughs> if you're listening, guy, I have it. I just haven't written it yet. We so. we have also <laughs> tried to make an effort to bring on more ladies. You notice Lynn was on the podcast. Lynn's writing. Oh yeah. Phyllis Klosinski that's, writes. That's general, though. So, that's something the libertarian movement needs to get, a, get on top of now. Hey, now. So <laughs> now on to the podcast area, which is the area that I really enjoy the most. I'm, you know, I enjoy kind of managing everybody and going, yeah, Greg, that looks good. And Joe, no, don't let that on the blog, please. You know, <laughs> and kind of managing everybody and saying, okay, here's where we're going. But my love is the podcast. I love radio. I'm a former radio guy. That's always I listen to podcasts constantly. Um, I have been carrying around our brand new board that if you saw it on Twitter or Facebook, we got it. we had one of the one of the uh, co-hosts of the show. I don't know if they want outed or not. Uh, bought a brand new board, contributed it to it, and I've been carrying it around like Linus's blanket. I slept <laughs> with it last night. Um, I cuddled with it. Mrs. Uh, Spangle. Mrs. Very, Spangle. Very Mrs. Spangle walked in and goes, "What the hell have you been spending <laughs> your money on now?" Because she's like, "We're never going to have kids. We're never going to have a home because you just keep buying headphones and microphones. And how much did that cost?" I go, "I didn't buy it. Somebody else bought it." And you know what she said to me next? She goes, "What did you do?" <laughs> I, said, I, said, I didn't do anything. She goes, "You know how you can be." I go, "How's that?" You talked him into buying it, didn't you? You sat there and you said, man, it'd be great if we could have this, but I just, you know, we don't have this. I'm like, I didn't do that. Even though I kind of <laughs> did, 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 did do that and it worked, but no. I said, no, it it was just, you know, we had a need. Somebody else on the show wanted to fill the need because they had, you know, won a bunch of money recently and, and were able to get the new board. And I, she goes, okay, fine, but I don't want to see another headphone come into this house. I said, no worries, honey. I looked at a space to start a podcast studio this week. <laughs> so, so, quick question: yeah. Since I draw a salary, should I be worried about, uh, you know, participating in this episode? No. Am no. I going to be solicited for buying sound equipment? No. Or? We have tens of tens of listeners. Are we still going so, with that joke? No. Actually, yeah. We should thank everybody who listens because we are now into the hundreds. We're in, like, we're in the like twins, twenties, and thirties. We're in like now. dozens <laughs> of listeners 
now. No, we. I'll tell you what. In the, the last three and a half months, we have expanded the audience to well over 600 people an episode. Which how, much, wow. how, much, how much time do we have left in this episode? Um, we should have ended like an hour and a half ago. Uh, we've been recording for an hour and 18 minutes. So okay. we're not, we're, we're not going to talk about the Martin Luther King anniversary. Uh, we, we have 10 more minutes, so we'll wrap up here in just a second. Uh, we relaunched What is a Hoosier Network? If you hear that at the end of every episode, we are rebranding that WAL Radio Network. So go to wal-radio.com. Check out our podcast. Th that's We're going to expand into some more podcasts. I'm thinking about doing my own show. Maya has a couple shows. Um, and Peppers and I were talking about maybe taking the articles off of the website and reading that and putting that into a podcast feed. So if you're an auditory listener like I am, I learn audi audibly. You know, And so that way you can get that on the podcast feed. We need to do a book club. We have podcast book club. That, uh, I got a lot of ideas too. Lynn Swayze and I have been even been talking about a WAL, a wall publishing division. So, oh my God! We, oh, wow. we should just bring on. We should have our contributors come on and be like, "Hey, we read defending the undefendable. Let's talk about." Yeah. it. Yeah. So we are really trying to find ways to keep you entertained, expand the brand. Oh, we're trying to keep them entertained. Lots yeah. fair let's books, not, we are coming for you. you. <laughs> Mr. Tucker has absolutely nothing to worry about. Let's collectively yes. discuss some books on libertarianism. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, so if you have ever, I'm not going to ask, like, just because we do the podcast and we meet and we spend several hours a week doing this i'm not going to beg for anything see that must be no what let's, my wife look, is let's, talking look at, let's look at it this but way when we do the podcast most of us just sit around and drink beer and talk about politics some of us it join takes, us some of us it takes several hours of work to prepare and edit the podcast because some people <laughs> get us off track and say um a lot i'm not saying you buddy me? are you saying me no. i don't say um i say i mean a lot yeah <laughs> i know i i know like that's one of i'm Creighton's. a number Elmer, yes. Uh, so if you have ever laughed once or you have ever heard something on this podcast or on our website that makes you go, hmm, that is an interesting thought. I should think about that. Then go to wearelibertarians.com, pick one of our sponsors like Amazon or Audible, or just go to the little PayPal button and throw us five, ten, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. I mean, <laughs> and help us grow because we've got some Five, plans. Five, ten, or fifteen dollars will be okay too. Five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars, whatever you'd like. You... We're not going to ask you just because you listen to this podcast that you should donate something. If you get something out of it, like laughing or thinking or bathroom material, we don't make. <laughs> we don't then... make you guys, we don't make any money doing this. No, this so... costs me a lot of money to do. <laughs> <laughs> Throw us any money. It's not like you're just up in our uh, and I, paycheck or something. And we, we ain't got no paycheck. And we have been discussing several ways to waste a lot more of my money. So if you would <laughs> like to help us grow, then please kick in something, help us grow, and uh, we'll continue to crank out the quality stuff. Somebody get a hold of uh, oh, what's the guy? Uh, morning talk radio guy. Abdul? No. Greg Garrison. Greg Garrison. We need to get a hold of Greg Garrison and have him come on. That'll crank that. Up. He will is. be a good show. He, uh, no, can I say something real quick about sure. the Amazon sponsorship? Um, uh, I listen to Penn Sunday School, and one of their sponsors is Amazon. And one thing they're always saying is that you have to clear your cookies before clicking that link. I'm, I'm wondering if that's a similar setup. Yeah, just in case you're catting around with us on other Amazon links, make sure you clear your cookies regularly. So let's move on. If you have listened to this infomercial for the We Are Libertarian brand, we greatly appreciate yeah. it. This is what um, happens on Slow News Weeks. All it, come, all it turns into is shameless self -promotion. Click on our links. Give us money. I, well, no, but, you know, I think it's important. Like, people want to know. Maybe some people are interested into what we're up to and what the whole point of this, all of this is and where we're going and why do we keep bugging people with new stuff. And so if you like stuff that we're doing, if you hate stuff that you're doing, if you have tips or suggestions, we're always trying to improve. <laughs> Uh, I don't get my feelings hurt. Creighton, we have to be a little delicate with. Um, <laughs> but everybody else, you know, let us know what we're doing or not doing can, right. I'm we'll just thinking, can you food. believe we, we, we're already, we're 39 episodes. 39 episodes. Seriously. That's crazy. We were doing episode six a year ago. I know. There should be some uh, some 50th anniversary uh, episode, 50 
anniversary. You know, I was thinking this week about maybe a listener party. So yeah. Fifty episodes in like ten episodes. I invite everybody to bring those. Yeah, maybe some <laughs> local restaurant or the clubhouse here at the apartment complex. Just some sort of party, like no, to don't, don't do get this. people together. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want you people knowing where I live. <laughs> All right, so let's wrap up. Let's talk about what has gone on this week. What you just your your uh, the end of the week roundtable stuff that we missed, stuff that is important that we didn't get to. Um, things to watch out for this week. Anything interesting that you'd like to talk about? What is the topic that we did not get to that you um, and I it, uh, it was the Macho Man. It was the uh, oh yes. yes. Oh, why did you divert him like that? <laughs> I don't know which one should we talk about first. Uh, okay, gee, let's see so, the cocaine, so, okay, the cocaine okay, okay, laden okay. wrestler okay. from the eighties or the okay, civil okay, rights okay. hero. So, so Martin Luther King, the anniversary of his assassination or his birth? It's assassination. Assassination yeah. was Martin Luther King Day is his birth. Okay. Right. Today is the day, the anniversary of his assassination. So. I mean, we, we were going to try and spend more time on it and talk about... But we uh, decided to talk about and us, and so we decided to use <laughs> our own horn for the whole episode. But, I mean, that, that's something that we could probably talk about next week, maybe. Because um, we, can't, we can't get that many people. But. Yeah. So Martin Luther King, and actually we're here in Indianapolis where there is a park because this is one of the few cities where there were no, no riots. Race. Because of uh, Bobby Kennedy. Bobby Kennedy was here in uh, what is now MLK Park here off of College Avenue in Indianapolis, and he uh, calmed the crowd down, and his you know, speech is um, engraved near John F. Kennedy, and uh, I think it's John F. Kennedy's, maybe Martin Luther King's burial yeah. at Arlington. If you go to Arlington National Cemetery, his speech, Bobby Kennedy's speech when he was in Indianapolis is engraved there. When I was a reporter here in town, that I was there when they opened that memorial, and I got to meet Ethel Kennedy and... Uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr. They were here in town, so I got to meet the two of them and interview Bobby Jr. I actually got to interview Martin Luther King III. That was maybe one of the coolest things I ever got to do as a reporter was was interviewing him. He was a real nice guy. So I would hope so. Yeah. No. I was being like, yeah, he hit me with a chair, and I think it was amped up on cocaine. Oh no, that was Randy Macho <laughs> Man <was> Savage. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah they did, they did walks, I'm coming in. for you. I have one more question. Questions. No more questions. <laughs> bow down. Yeah. You're a liar. You're a faker. <laughs> I told Elizabeth, you go left and I'll go right. Hogan, I thought we were friends. We, you said we were friends, but you're a liar. <laughs> we, I don't know why. I just ended up watching. I was like, I wonder what Macho Man is up to these days. I found out he died. And so I went on YouTube late yesterday afternoon before I left work. And uh, looked up some Macho Man clips. No, I know what it was. It was Chappelle, and I was looking up cocaine's a hell of a drug. Because <laughs> we were talking about the Chappelle show in our, in our chat. And I saw cocaine-fueled Macho Man promo. And I was like, I cannot click. I cannot not click on a cocaine-fueled Macho Man promo. <laughs> I'm coming for you at WrestleMania like, 6, and you said you loved Elizabeth, but you were wrong. wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? Yeah. You said nothing would ever happen, and then Hogan, it was, it was amazing. It was so Beautiful. funny looking at Daily Libertarian this morning, so I hadn't edited anything out, and it was all news, and then six Randy Macho. <laughs> 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 I just started tweeting it out. Yeah, it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, one of the, the people I follow on Twitter is Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon. You guys remember him? Oh, yeah, yeah the Razor's dead. Yeah, and he, he posts old promos of himself all the time, like, yo, my... Yeah, well, Would you want to mess with that bad guy? Have you, have you seen him lately? <laughs> he's not doing well at you know all. What? No, he's not. It, it's funny because me and my dad, when I was little, we would watch WWF every every week. You know, we would always root for The Undertaker. Those were some good times, man. They I know. They don't, they don't do WWF like they used to. Now no. it's like John Cena. In those videos, it was amazingly talented actors and entertainers and broadcasters. I don't know. I think Randy Macho Man Savage was of, literally on cocaine. The whole time. Yeah, but here they are, these amazing entertainers. They're standing in front of a Glamour Shots backdrop. It looks like the thing that you used to have your high, your grade school pictures in front of, the little gray screen. And it's <laughs> just them and a camera talking into it, you know, what you gonna do, brother, when the world's largest arms wrap around <laughs> 
<laughs> and like nobody does that anymore. It's just all you know. I gotta yes. be mad at you because the boss says so. Right. <laughs> We're in a feud, so I'm gonna be in a that's, feud with those. <laughs> no, but that's those guys seriously did not like each other. Like Hogan, when he was on Bubba the Love Sponge all the time, would go on and he'd be like, "Yeah, bro, brother." I, I didn't like Macho Man. He stole my cocaine all the time. <laughs> he was always sneaking in and narking on me and taking my cocaine. I didn't think it was possible for fewer women to listen to this show, but <laughs> I, I am positive. How if did, there were two, it's at one now. How did we from? I think I think with this conversation, we lost every girl and we gained Jack Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, we go from like, and he was an inspiring leader. There was no riots. Bobby Kennedy. I got to meet Martin Luther King. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah! Just, just think about that for a second. We went from Bobby Kennedy to Randy Macho Man <laughs> in one sentence. Literally, the only thing they have in common is death. That is if you ever get a chance, there was this little-known album that the WWF put out called WrestleMania: The Album, and they actually had wrestlers like semi singing songs like, uh, it, like every song was a different wrestler and this is like back in Undertaker, Bret the Hitman Hart, right. uh, I think the Dudley Boy or no the uh, the the Nasty Boys. Rowdy Roddy Piper. Yeah, and the the Macho Man started out his song with the tower of power too sweet to be sour funky like a monkey. Oh yeah. <laughs> there goes Ridiculous. the other <laughs> <laughs> With Rowdy, no. Rowdy, Rowdy Rowdy Piper? No. Oh, that's such a good movie. You guys have to watch it. It's on Netflix. It's such a good flick. It's a uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Have you ever seen the episode of South Park where Kenny and uh, Jimmy get in a fight? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that whole fight is move for move, choreographed, perfectly, perfectly replicated from a fight, and they live between Rowdy Roddy Piper and... And some actor that you you know but you don't know his name. Right. Um, <laughs> has changed immensely since we started talking He's about like, wrestling. <laughs> it's like you went into the bathroom and took a hit of something. It's like <laughs> almost like he cares. Yeah. It's like we're talking about Rand Paul again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's let's continue. Let's continue wrapping I'm not, up. I'm on board. Peppers. Anything guy. that you'd like to say or plug or this is your big moment to shine. This is my big moment to shine, huh? Right. Uh, I'd like That's to listen to everybody listening to this to uh, read my articles on wearelibertarians.com. Only three plugs in episode. Oh, yeah, that's true. Sorry. <laughs> We're so beyond that. <laughs> We're in, like, Wayne Root territory at this yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, two things I'd like to discuss uh, real quick. One, uh, North Korea. Everybody's trying to freak out about it. I Listen, think it's way overblown. Yeah, they don't want to do war. <laughs> they, want to, they don't want to do war. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they don't want to do war. I don't think anyone's freaking out. Just based on what my news feed, I don't think anyone in the world takes them seriously. Apparently, I didn't see you. I, I'm, I'm listening to the news cycle, and they keep harping on it. And like, there was even a, I like the, the, there's even work about, or there's even talk about uh, EMPs. And I was just like, have you seen the the best picture I've seen thus far? Is him holding the floppy disk. Says what they. <laughs> 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 I just I want all our listeners to remember don't don't uh, get caught up in the hype about that. The other thing I'd like to mention is Wayne Allen Root has released a new book, and he was uh, he was on the Peter Schiff show recently. You're really gonna plug this? <laughs> I, there's something I'd like to say here. Are you <laughs> claim oh, racism, Joe. Claim racism. <laughs> I can't even see your pictures, so you can't claim racism. Joe's Joe's Mexican. <laughs> oh. I thought he was Haitian. Oh, oh. he's not Haitian. You hear him? Oh. I, I'm just kidding. There's I'm no kidding. profanity on this podcast. You're lucky. Guam. Joe's Be Dominican. Nice. Joe's he's Dominican. Cuban, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Are you Moving on. From Spain, right? I think no, he's, he's European. We're right? just kidding. Joe is our only. Uh, he's he meets our EEOC requirements for diversity. <laughs> 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 And so whatever he does something, it was like, yeah, man. Like, I totally un – I didn't do it on purpose today. I legitimately thought, like, oh, cool. Here's this Hispanic radio meeting out in San Diego. Joe works in radio. Joe's Hispanic. He goes to Hispanic meetings in South Bend and networks with people. This would be a great opportunity for Joe to <laughs> network. And then, like, everybody's like, you're such a racist, man. <laughs> Joe, Joe's response was, oh, yeah, I'll take my mariachi or something. <laughs> <laughs> mariachi. My, he goes, I hope my son <laughs> Was big enough. Yeah. <laughs> like I knew what I, I I really thought that he was taking a shot 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you were justified. I know. Like, <laughs> you were justified. But, uh, it's funny. After ha- our, 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 our chats, like, if we have any professionalism on the podcast or on the <laughs> website, it is not a reflection of our chat. <laughs> <laughs> for the show. I wish we could do the best of the chats every, every Friday on the website, but we can't. <laughs> There's no way we could get away with it. Terrible. Yeah. So, Peppers, you were, you were trying to save us from, uh, save us from losing ourselves. our credibility. Yeah, by talking about Wayne Allen Root. Go ahead. Uh, Wayne, Allen, Wayne Allen Root and his the Ultimate Obama Survival Guide. Yeah, he got... Uh, he was plugging on uh, and plugging it on the Peter Schiff show, and one of the things he mentioned that I thought was actually a pretty good idea. You know, he homeschools all his kids because it's cheaper than private school, and what he does is he hires retired teachers to teach his kids. I thought that that was a very novel solution, and it turns out apparently, just hiring your own teachers is cheaper than. <laughs> you know, contracting that out to a private school or right. even a public school for that matter hey, if you his, run the numbers. His daughter, Dakota, is in Harvard, as he mentions a lot. Yeah, so. I mean, I would too if I had a daughter in Harvard. Yeah. You know? Greg? Uh, yeah, just three really, really quick things. First thing, I had tweeted out and put on Facebook, I believe. Yeah, it was really inappropriate, man. What? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> well, I want. I'm. I'm. In, I'm still interested in this gay marriage thing, and I want to know. <laughs> All right, Peppers, uh, do you take this yeah. man? To be- <laughs> <laughs> well, we did share a love seat, you know. This <laughs> it is. That's not a love seat. That's a couch I can afford. <laughs> <laughs> you, you bought half a couch voluntarily. <laughs> it's a love seat. Um, I want to know if if you solely if you started uh, a church and. It was only for the purpose of marrying homosexuals. Would DOMA violate uh, equal protection and the First Amendment in as far as practicing religion goes? I'd love to hear from a lawyer on that. And then Mike Pence uh, did a little ceremony in commemoration of Martin Luther King's assassination. Really? And I thought that was pretty interesting given, oh, I don't know, 50 years ago where he would have been standing. <laughs> He would not have been on the side of Bobby Kennedy. I can guarantee you that. And then he's supporting a, a bill that is going to make marijuana a, a felony, All the right. smallest possession of it. It seriously is hilarious to me, like, how far you have fallen down the rabbit hole. You're like, oh, <laughs> the racist a-hole. Like, no. <laughs> Turned into Wilson Allen from no, I, the local always, Democratic Party. I've always fought. I've always fought the social conservative wing of the Republican right. Party. They're the ones that alienated me. Yeah, Mike Pence, and I think for our national listeners, Mike Pence is our governor here in Indiana. He's number we, three we in the house. We have national. We have international listeners. We have over. Se- we have what? over seven countries listening to this show. I need to seven. Watch what I say. Seven countries. So okay. there are people in it's China. Two. At two Brute. Now, like the China <laughs> and the Russians, like I kind of know where those are coming from, but we'll take it. So, <laughs> um, so, so, say whatever you want about America, but be careful when talking about other countries. Like yeah. China. So, unless it's the great white menace to the north. Yes. Then you're <laughs> then you're so, Mike Pence you you're, is you're, our you're governor. Homeland? And how dare you? Mike Pence is our governor here in Indiana, and he left the House of Representatives to run for governor. Because in roughly 18 months, it's the worst kept secret in Indiana politics. He plans on running for president uh, in 2016. No. Yeah, and he left the house to get some uh, real world experience because he's never managed anything ever. Uh, he was a talk radio show host. Here's the funny thing: Mike Pence, talk radio show host; John Gregg, talk radio show host. But he had been Speaker of the House, and the other guy had, and Mike Pence had been uh, in the House of Representatives. Rupert on Survivor, but has done all these amazing things with small business, with charity. He's achieved all this stuff. Oh, that's just a a publicity stunt. It's like, that's entirely Mike Pence's career as a publicity (laughs) stunt. And so he's trying to pass a tax cut here in Indiana, 10% tax cut, which will save you roughly like, what is it, $400 a year or something? Max. And so the legislature is mad about it because they're all like, you're not sticking us with the revenue fall. Uh, when you leave to run for president in 18 months. So you're not getting it. We told you you're not getting it. You pursued it anyways, and now you're out in the communities making us look like we're rhinos. Well, guess what? You're going to get 3%, which is roughly going to give Hoosiers back $44. Yeah. So when you hear several uh, several months from now Mike Pence touting the tax cuts that he passed through and this new style of campaigning around Indiana, 
I want you all to know exactly what that is around the nation so you can tell your friends. The great fiscal conservative Mike Pence. It's going to be him, Mike Huckabee, and Rick Santorum leading the George oh, Wallace party. You think oh, my goodness. Trump will run again? Yes. He's already teamed himself up. Yep. Is, is he? You think yeah, so? Yeah, he's got a his group. I mean, it's, He's been keeping himself relevant in the news. He is so... That's, why do you think so, Gary... He's he, going to get so stomped on, man. No, I have a different idea. No. Am I the only one that thinks Rick Santorum looks like Little Nicky, that Adam Sandler movie, the character <laughs> that he played? <laughs> I he think totally I, does. After, see, after seeing the pictures I posted in the chat that one time, I think he looks like the Hardly Boys from South Park. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I tell you what I think is going to happen to him is the media is going to try and make him seem like he's a legitimate contender, and then he may have like another Iowa kind of thing where he does a door to door kind of thing. Does, but he's just going to get demolished. He's going to get demolished, demolished, demolished. Huckabee's a no go from the beginning. Um, Pence could actually muster, muster it up, but. I still um, honestly think it's going to be Rand Paul versus Marco Rubio. I think Rubio goes early. I don't think Rubio has a shot. I think he's hollow. I think once the majority of people start paying attention to the presidential race, they look at Rubio and he folds. I uh, think I think the race is going to be between Rand Paul and somebody that we don't know, somebody like Chris uh, Christie. Not even a Christie. Like you think, uh, you think what's his face? Bush, Jeb Bush. But will... Jeb Bush is somebody that I think would jump in there. Maybe some governor like Bob McDonald would jump in there. That you oh, know, what's his face from uh, Bobby Jindal? Bobby. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. I, I think no. the Republicans are going to make the same this mistakes. Is Bobby, that they have been Bobby and... Jindal for president. This is a political. <laughs> thing. That's not a no, honestly, honestly, <laughs> this, this election is going to be one of those ones where I think the Republican establishment are going to push another Romney type of person. And I think this is the t this is the, the 2016 election is the time where I think there's enough support on the grassroots level to overcome that push on the part of the establishment and get someone like a Rand Paul elected, regardless of establishment opinion. I mean that hasn't been able to happen in 2012 or tw 2008, but I think 2016 is the time where that there will be enough support, enough consolidated effort on the grassroots level to make that happen. We're like Cubs fans. This has got to be the year. This is this is the time. It's like, I, I mean, I I think of like a Barry Goldwater type of situation. Yeah, that worked out real well. No, he <laughs> lo he lost to Johnson. He lost to Johnson. But I mean, he changed the Republican Party for decades. I mean, even Gary Johnson. You talk about and Santorum's doing sort of the same thing. Gary Johnson's on a college tour right now. Check him out if he's in your area. Um, it's in Illinois, yes. It's Our American Initiative. Check that out. Google it. Don't like their Facebook page. He's going on a college tour. But that is essentially, I think, his campaign for liberty. I think that's a lot of what Johnson is doing. Yeah. That is a campaign for liberty to, to run again in 16. And that's what Santorum is doing. That is what, you know, Rand Paul is using the, uh, the Ron Paul structure for. So 16 is well underway on the Republican side. On and the Democratic a... side, it looks like Hillary – Hillary's making moves. Yep. She's probably going to sweep it, but there is still plenty of time for some Democratic spoiler to come in and take away her thumb. Who knows? I don't Who knows? Know. Maybe Kucinich still has some. Kucinich has some juice. <laughs> He's not going to. He, he won't get a I mean, Hillary, Joe, Hillary, never count out fighting Joe Biden. Hillary, <laughs> um, Biden I'd say there will be some governor, maybe, from the Northeast that comes in and tries to be a spoiler. But at this point, I think Hillary's probably the shoe in as the can as the is the choice. I, have, I think I think after 2008 with the whole battle between Clinton and um, Obama and how that it, it they didn't lose but it hurt them for a while. I think I don't think that they want that to happen again. I think the Democratic Party is more monolithic than people give them credit for. Maya just texted me I might be the vice chair of the Johnson County Party. Oh crap. Oh wow. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't show up to the meetings. You get elected to leadership positions. That's what happens in the Libertarian Party. You don't campaign, boom, you're elected. Uh, Joe, what is coming up in the next week, or what haven't we talked about that catches your interest, and what would you like to talk about? No, I, I think that everything that I you know, would have wanted to say has probably already been said. Um, but I would like to encourage people, if you are a fan, if you uh, do like listening to We're Libertarians, or if you want to be a contributor, email me. Uh, I always looking for guest contributors and other things to put on the site, and you know, I'd love to get as many as as possible, uh, and just kind of keep this thing moving forward. Yeah, go to uh, wearelibertarians.com forward slash submissions, one of our pages. So check that out. And I also want to say that my wife says we've gone on way too long. Well, <laughs> not listening. And
and <laughs> your wife may be the boss of you, but she is not the boss of me. This is true. I can't wait to let her listen to that. Yeah. <laughs> boss, and she'll be home in roughly 45 minutes, so y'all need to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go home. You don't have to stay here. <laughs> um, Creighton, Creighton was driving her crazy, I think, afterwards, last time when he was playing the guitar. I'm breaking that song gun out after this <laughs> over. So, uh, alright, did everybody get to talk? All oh, right. I got to talk. Is that what we were doing? Just talking. Yeah, we're just talking. That's basically the point. Mad Men starts up soon. Mad Men, seriously, you know, this is about to become We Are Mad Men. It is. <laughs> like, I think I might suit up for one of the episodes. I'm just seriously to, to commemorate it. Uh, gonna I, run, fellas. Gonna run. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's end this show with a bang. All right. There you go. Thank you very much for listening to We Are Libertarians this week. We'll see you next week. Please share the episode with a friend, and we, as always, promise to do better next time. <laughs> Rampal 2016. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Apologize to do better next time has kind of become our uh, apologize to Matt Damon <laughs> thing that Kimmel does. <laughs> All right, see you guys later. See you, See you Joe. Joe. Coffee's for closers. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, Joe. Figure out when you're coming down, man. Or if we're, like, how that's working Hey, out. ask your wife when you're allowed to come down and see your friends. Yeah, I talked to her about it already. She said, you know, just, I mean, when do you guys want to do it? When can Joe come out and play? <laughs> do you want to do it?